Welcome back everyone. This is the fifth video of the Spelling New Workshop series. And in this one, I'm going to be covering three languages actually together. Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese. They're all Romance languages, if you remember what I said previously, they're all descendants of Latin. And geographically, they're located not too far from each other either. We just covered French, and so we have Spanish, Portuguese in Portugal here, and Italian here. So to start with, Spanish and go in that order, and basically what I'll be going over is giving you examples of pictures and associating them with words, and in that process taking a look at some common spelling patterns that you see with letter combinations and sounds that lead to particular spellings. So when you think of Spain and Spanish culture, these are a couple images that you might have in your head. There are around 2,900 Spanish words in the dictionary. Spanish is the official language in 21 countries around the world, and we have adopted many languages, many words from Spanish, into English. The first common letter combination that we're going to go over is the CH for CH. So the word chayote, for example, it's a vegetable. You have gazpacho, it's a type of soup that's usually served cold. You have chihuahua, most of us have encountered either the dogs or seen the word before. You have chubasco, a severe squall of rain and wind, especially along the west coast of Central America. And you have chaparral, a dense, impenetrable thicket of stiff or thorny shrubs or dwarfy trees. Some other words like this that you might want to write down, I don't have them on the slide, are words like anchovy, the fish, mariachi, the band, enchiladas, the food, boca chica, a freshwater fish, see if you can spell that one, cauchero, someone who gathers rubber sap, chia, like the seeds, and nachos. The Spanish spelling pattern of turning a Y sound into the letters LL is something that you might be familiar with if you've ever encountered tortillas in the wild before. Tortillas and quesadillas all have an I-L-L-A at the end. That's because the I-L-L-A is a diminutive form. This quesadilla, for example, comes from queso, which means cheese. In other cases, you don't have that diminutive at the end, you have the LL somewhere in the middle of a word. In pollera, for example, a Latin American fiesta costume that's usually heavily embroidered and full in the skirt, the LL is in the middle. The same thing happens in the word noviero. A noviero is an aspiring bullfighter who has not yet attained the rank of matador. Gainaso means of or relating to an ancient culture of northern Peru, characterized especially by negative painted pottery, which you see here. Gaina means hen. You also have piloncillo, which is this dark brown sugar over here. And you have blanquillo, which is a white fish. But that doesn't mean that the LL, when it's spelled, is always pronounced a ya. Yeah. Oftentimes you'll have words that include Spanish as part of their etymologies, but they still have the LL pronounced with a hard L sound. Words like chinchilla, it's a really cute one right there, piccalilli, armadillo, alligator, a cordillera, which in this case is a string or a line of mountain peaks from the word cordilla which was a diminutive of cuerda, which means rope, or a flotilla, a fleet of ships. So it goes both ways. And as you'll see, you also sometimes have it combined. There. Sometimes you have both the l and the y combined when you have an ll. So here you would have a banderilla, in a banderillero's hand, or a quadrilla, a team assisting a matador in the building. 
note that it's not necessary that these words are pronounced this exact same way in original Spanish. It just happens to be that when the dictionary has notated these words down, that's the pronunciation that it chose to keep, a sort of blend of the L and the Y. Words like tomatillo also have alternate pronunciations with just tomatillo. And other words like naranjilia. No, they're also that the J is a H sound, like an H, which I'm going to cover in the next slide right here. In Spanish, the J sound, or the H, is often spelled with a J letter. So, jicama, this root vegetable. You have guajillo, which is on that tree. You have jalapeños, you might be familiar with this chili pepper. You have a faja. This is a wide, bright sash worn around the waist by Spaniards and some Latin Americans. And you have hippie hapa. It's a fun uh, plant, and the fiber from that plant is actually used to make Panama hats. For some bonus words, you should also note down the word aparejo. It's a pack saddle made of stuffed leather or canvas. Another interesting pattern, this time without any pictures, uh, in Spanish is that when you have some vowels sandwiching a th sound, that's usually spelled with a d. For example, the word capeador. So it's not a hard d like capeador, it's capeador. It's a softer d. And you know that's going to be spelled with a letter d and not a th. Same thing with agitanazo. Caudillo, and Rejonero. Of course, the way that this is pronounced is going to depend on what pronouncer you have at a particular spelling bee. They might pronounce it differently from me, and any two pronouncers are going to pronounce it slightly differently. But that being said, everyone must abide by the pronunciations given in the official dictionary, Merriam-Webster's Third New International Unabridged. And those are the ones that I have copied in here. First of all, for some other words that have the same pattern, listen to agitanado, colegio, and cojita. Here's an opportunity for you to test yourself, because I'm, I'm going to tell you how to spell these words. Agitanado means agitation, or a clue. It comes from gitano, meaning gypsy. This one is spelled A-G-I-T-A-N-A-D-O. Colegio means secondary school, basically college, and that one's spelled C-O-L-E-G-I-O. And cojita is a tossing of a bullfighter by a bull. Cojita is spelled C-O-G-I-D-A. In Spanish, when you have the O sound, it's an open vowel system. So the O sound is almost always spelled with the letter O. You have a presidio over on the left. You have the bolero, it's a type of dance. You have a junco, a, a junco, that's a type of bird. This is one word where the J actually has a J sound and not the H. You have a tango, which you probably have heard of, and it's a kind of dance also. And you have a guiro, which is a kind of instrument. Some more words, you have aparejo, pack saddle of stuffed leather and canvas, and then churrasco, beef broiled over a pit in a skewer. For some consonant rules, let's say you have a k sound, right, followed by some open vowels, whether it's an a, so k, or ki, or ki. If you have an a, o, or u sound, that's going to be a c. So, escabeche. Fish or chicken, fried and marinated in spicy sauce. Barracuda, a large bony fish. Cacamistle, a carnivore kind of like a raccoon. All of these have the letter C in the spelling. This is going to be different when you have usually an ending sound where you don't have a long vowel right after. So, cacique is an American Indian chief. And that one, for the cuff sound at the end, is a Q-U-E. Coquina is spelled with a Q-U-I for the key sound. And then quebracho has a Q-U-E for the K sound. So just a little bit of 
being mentally aware about what sort of vowel sound you're hearing, and once you're familiar enough with these words, it'll be really easy to identify which consonant pattern is going to fit with what you hear. With the S sound, it's slightly simpler. If you have an S sound, it's going to be spelled with a C. Sinodi, C-E, Bolasi, C-I, Hacienda, C-I, Cilantro, C-I, And here's a final look at some Spanish words. Caribi is a piranha. Azulejo is a blue tile made in Spain and Portugal. It comes from azul, meaning blue. You have a lanero, a caca missile over here. It looks Greek, right, because of the caca, which usually means bad. But here, this is actually from Nahuatl roots, so not Greek at all. It's kind of like a false cognate. It looks that way, but it really isn't. Coquina, a small marine clan. And Leoncito, a lion monkey. So that about wraps it up for Spanish. Uh, and now we're going to take a quick trip into Italian words and take a look at these. There are around 2,500 words in the English dictionary from Italian. Thinking about Italy conjures up images of pizza, pasta, wine, cheese, opera, music, art in your head. The Roman Empire had many famous people, and you can compare Roman gladiators with Spanish monitors and, for example, Italian inventors. I have Leonardo da Vinci here, you might have heard of him. You have the great astronomer Galileo Galilei. There are many historical elements that have also contributed lots of words to the English language. Speaking of letters and pizza, the same letter combination that you have in the middle of pizza is something that's present in a lot of Italian. That s sound is going to contribute a z z. You have palazzo, you have Tazza, that's an ornamental receptacle with a large, flat, shallow bowl on a pedestal and often having handles. A brangazza, a two-masted trawler common near Venice. Mozzarella, kind of cheese which probably most of you already know. You have a piazza, it's an open square. Bozzetto, a small clay study, it's like a rough draft before you make a larger sculpture. And some other words. There's a word called Lippetsoner, which is a breed of shapely, spirited, chiefly white horses developed by crossbreeding horses of Spanish, Danish, Italian, and Arabian ancestry. If you really want to go on a fun field trip there, look for that word. You can also look for the words Pavanazzo, which means marble with veins usually of red, violet, or purple. It's named after a Latin word pavanaceous, like a peacock's tail from pavon, or pavo, meaning peacock. You can imagine how those multicolored veins in the marble might look like peacock feathers. There are also the words tetrazzini, mezzanine, and mozzarella is right there. One thing to watch out for in Italian is there's often a silent G where you least expect it. The word gnocchi, dumplings of pasta made of cheese, Tagliatelle, pasta in the shape of noodles. Intaglio, an engraving in stone or other hard material. Imbroglio, a confused mass or conglomeration. Bardiglio, a dark gray Italian marble with a lot of veins. Zavaglioni, a whipped dessert or topping made of egg yolks and sugar. Consigliere, a counselor. And Guadagnini, a violin made by a family of the same name. All of these words are united by the fact that they have a G that's silent, usually before an L or an N. So be careful whenever you hear that sort of ny sound or a L sound, because there might be a G lurking right behind. Speaking of which, when you have that ny sound, it's almost always going to be a G N. So here with the ny sound, you have a signorina, an unmarried Italian woman. You have a segno, a notation in music that marks the beginning or end of a musical repeat. A cognoscenti, someone who's an expert in something. A malmignat, 
A small black venomous spider of southern Europe that has 13 small red spots on the abdomen. You have bolognese, usually used to describe sauce, being or prepared with tomato sauce that has meat in it. Agnolotti, a kind of pasta. Pignolia, which means pine nuts. And lasagna, which most of you probably have. We also get a lot of music words from Italian. All of these on this page, everything from Passacaglia, tricky because it has a double consonant at the S and then a silent G before the L. That means an old Italian or Spanish dance tune. Alargando, which also has a double L. This one means becoming gradually broader with the same or greater volume. It's a music direction. Ataca almost as if you're attacking the music. Affectuoso, tender or affecting. The music has to be very emotional. You have appassionato, deeply impassioned or emotional, also music direction. You have glissando, it's gliding, a rapid series of consecutive notes. You have jocoso, here the C makes a cu sound. Uh, and jocoso comes from Latin jocos, it's like basically joking around, it's lively, it's humorous. You have leggeramente, it means in a light, delicate, and brisk style. You have murmurando, murmuring, you can hear that too. Solene, in a solemn manner. Semplice, means in a simple, unaffected manner. Here, that C is a ch sound. It's not like semplice, like an accomplice, it's semplice. You have pizzicato, which is plucking the strings when you're playing a stringed instrument like a violin. Vigoroso, vigorous play. Bisbigliando, it means very light and murmuring, usually the harp music. You have an appoggiatura, which is a sequence of notes. Strisciando, in a slurred or smooth manner. Scholto, with freedom and without strictness. And larghissimo, in as slow a manner as possible, very slow and broad. It comes from a Latin larghissimus, very abundant, from largus, large. So in most of these cases, you can trace back these Italian words to some Latin root. This is common for most Romance languages, and it definitely holds true here. Like you may have been noticing so far, the sh sound can be sometimes an sc, like sholto, and sometimes a ch. Examples of these are split up. You have colashoni, an instrument, crescendo, getting louder in music, and fascism, the type of government. These all have scs. And then you have words like pistachio, the nut, barouche, it's a kind of horse-drawn carriage, and grenache, a kind of grape, and all of those have CHs. So know the distinction, and these are words that you should be able to figure out which letter combination has. In the case of the k sound, similar to how the spelling patterns are in Latin, you're usually going to have a C, a CC, or a CCH. You won't usually see a K in here. That's for the Greek side. Boccaccio has a ch sound in that CC and a k in that single C. A zucchetto has a ka sound for the CCH. Same with buchero. Caccio cavallo is a type of cheese, and it's interesting because you have the ka sound in two of the C's and a ch sound in one of the C's. And you have a piccolo as the instrument. Some final Italian words over here, risorgimento, a time of renewal or renaissance, basically resurgence. You have panettone, the Christmas bread. You have eustachian, it's the canal inside your ear. A contratrice here. A cinquecento, the 16th century period in Italy where there was a literary and art artistic renaissance. A becafico, it's a kind of bird right here. A chacatura is a short grace note attached to a primary note. A fianchetto is a kind of move in chess. A quattrocento. And cacciatori, 
simmered or stewed with herbs and other seasonings. That takes us to the third language for today, which is Portuguese. Here's some images I've shown you in the summer workshop. There are 624 words from Portuguese in the English dictionary, and a lot of them have a couple eccentricities in the spelling patterns. The way that we transliterated the Portuguese pronunciations often differs from what you might first assume when you hear the words. Portuguese culture is evident in a lot of words that we brought over. For example, there are many words about sailing and boats. For example, this one right here is a caravel. It was a light sailing ship developed by the Portuguese in the late 1400s and used for over 300 years. That ship allowed them to explore the African coast and other cultural elements that you'll see in a bit. But if we get into the spelling, the A ah sound, the first open vowel, is usually spelled with either an A or an AA. So you occasionally usually have words like cabasa or carnala, it's a kind of wax, or jacaranda, they're really pretty trees, or avocado, or jangada. And all of these have an open A for the A ah sound. But then you occasionally have words like katinga and kapi. Katinga is stunted, rather sparse forest that is leafless in the dry season and widespread in northeastern Brazil. And kapi is a South American wooden vine. Both of these words are unique because they have that AA for the A ah sound. And it's tricky because there aren't very many of these words, but they still do exist. And that's why they're so appealing to the makers of spelling bees, because they're really tricky. And then the next open vowel, if you have the A sound, so you have A ah, and here you have A, because Portuguese has an open vowel system, that's usually spelled with an E. Words like berimbau or calema. But then, because Portuguese is sometimes spelled strangely like this, you occasionally have an EI for the A sound. Capoeira. Seringueiro. So capoeira is a Brazilian dance that incorporates martial arts movements. You have seringueiro, a rubber gatherer. You have barbeiro, a large black red-spotted cone-nosed bug of the American tropics. These are all spelled with the EI for the A sound. And then you have the ny. Remember how in Italian the ny sound was spelled with a G-N, like gnocchi or agnolotti? Here, the ny sound is slightly different, because in Portuguese when you have a ny sound, that's going to be spelled with an N-H. You have farinha, which is cassava meal or flour. It's related to Latin farina, meaning meal, like farinaceous, having starch. You have the word cavaquinho, which is a Brazilian string musical instrument, somewhat smaller than a ukulele. You have modinha, which is a Portuguese art song, and ainu, a tropical disease. All of these have the ny sound spelled with an NH. And then you have the j sound. In Portuguese, that j makes is spelled with a j. Feijoada is a kind of thick stew made of black beans and meat. Juvia is another name for the Brazil nut, it's a kind of nut. And you have Freja, it's a hard strong wood of a timber tree in the lower Amazon. For some bonus words you can look up the word Inaja. It's a tall pinnate leaved Brazilian palm with immense prickle tipped spades. That one's spelled I-N-A-J-A. -A because the je is spelled with a j here. And when instead of a je you have a sh, no z, it's an s, that can be spelled occasionally with a ch and occasionally with an x. So the ch is in words like shibiguazu here, this predator, and barasha, any of several Brazilian latex producing trees. In other cases you have abacaxi, like this pineapple here. Mashisha, a Brazilian ballroom dance. This one even has two of the X's that make the sh sound. 
And if you've been astute, you may have noticed that in many of these words, like feijoada, you have an oo sound that's actually spelled with an o. Shukalyu has two of them. Fadu, a plaintive Portuguese folk song. Botu, the pink Amazon River dolphin. It's a really cool animal. Occasionally, you have outliers like Gentu. This is the only place where the oo sound is spelled with an o o. So remember that. It's the kind of penguin. And viúva, also distinctive in this fact that it has a u. It's not what usually happens. And that's about it for a recap of Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese, some foundations of sounds that you might occur, and how they're actually spelled. I hope that helped, thanks for watching, and looking forward to seeing you in the next video.